Thank you for inviting me to this international conference on digital disruptions, trends and opportunities in marketing, hosted by IBS Mumbai. I also want to thank Professor Y.K. Bhushan, who has been an old friend for many, many years, and who is now the senior advisor and head of the IBS School of Business in Mumbai. Digital technology is more disruptive than any other technology that we have invented, discovered over time. In fact, think about the technologies like railroads and how much they transformed commerce, radio, telephone, television, or any other technology. And there are two reasons why digital technology will be more disruptive and therefore create equal opportunities for newcomers, new entrants, and might be a problem with incumbents in some fashion, is that first of all, this is the, the technology that is truly democratization of technology. All of the technologies have impacted from running water to electricity or anything we think about, maybe only 15, 20% of the population. This is the only technology that has gone for the mass market. Think about the cell phones. Who had ever imagined that India will have 800 million or a billion subscribers to our cell phones? Remember, telephone was a luxury declared by Indian Planning Commission, meant only for a few people. There was always a shortage of a landline telephone line. And by the way, those cell phones are now becoming smartphones and this year alone in 2016, it might exceed 200 million smartphones. Along with the smartphones, very affordable, we have now connectivity. Wireless connectivity is everywhere. With 4G evolution in India, which will be implemented, if not in 2016, by 2017, everybody will have access to the internet. Broadband wireless internet is another major democratization of the digital technology. Very important element that is taking place simultaneously is the old initiative that was created to create a universal digital identification. And I'm so pleased that despite the government change, that initiative has been nurtured and actually implemented as fast as we can. So we now have more than 800 million people already having a biometric identification. And I was equally surprised and very pleased to find that as much as 150 to 200 million people out in the rural market, especially base of the pyramid customers who now have a banking capability. They were all unbanked and nobody paid attention. So this technology is creating access and affordability to a level that is unimagined in any other technology before. Last element, and that is this technology, not only the internet, but worldwide web. Content is digitized. Not just the English content, but any language content. I find surprisingly often being based in Atlanta and in America, to do a Google search on Gujarati phrases. And I get an immediate Google response, giving me all the jokes, and <laughs> giving me all the uh, local sayings. Think about Gujarati language, not just Hindi language, which one can understand, or Mandarin in Chinese, for example, one can understand, but all the vernacular languages now, their content is digitized. Any new content we produce is automatically digitized and it has a global reach. In other words, somebody in a remote part of Russia can understand what is happening in India from a marketing viewpoint. So we all understand all this stuff, that this is probably the most disruptive technology impacting marketing. So let me articulate how this technology will impact, especially on each of the four Ps. But before I go into that, I do want to add one more component of this technology in addition to the 4G 
connectivity in addition to affordable devices like digital cameras and cell phones, smartphones, is very important, the rise of social media. Social media are totally transforming the marketing function. Who would have imagined that Facebook will have 1.2 billion population and the second largest market is India? Who would have imagined that WhatsApp, the largest market is in India? I mean, these are just unthinkable. And what is true for Facebook, WhatsApp will be true for Instagram, will be true for everything else. And therefore, worldwide power is now more balanced and maybe more shifted toward the markets and not the marketer. We always talked about we need to be consumer-centric in marketing. I think it has been a lip service from 1950s when we began to advocate why marketing is all about customer orientation, selling is all about product orientation. Today, despite marketers' efforts, true balance of power has shifted to our consumers and markets with the rise of social media on the one hand, access to information on the other hand, and elimination of the traditional middleman on the third hand. So let me now articulate on each of the four Ps. I will start with price. Prices will be dynamic pricing forever. What is true for the stock market, what is becoming true for, for example, airlines, is going to be universal for grocery products. Who said that the Panwala and the Kiranawala in a neighborhood with a digital technology access cannot have dynamic pricing for all of his SKUs? In a small retail space, of 400 square feet. He has probably about 1,000, 2,000 SKUs. He has no idea how to upgrade the prices, but today with universal product code, the scanner bar, everything else, I can make the prices real time all the way at the time of purchase by a customer walking in the store, and I can even actually offer differential pricing if possible and if required to different customers. I can say if you're my loyal, lifelong, multi-generational customer, for my little shop around here, you have one price. Prices are always negotiated in anyhow, especially in India. Of course, worldwide prices have been always negotiated in B2B markets. There is no fixed price. Only in consumer markets in advanced countries, we have fixed price. But prices will become dynamic. And that's going to change enormous impact in terms of the arbitrage that takes place through price mechanisms. People hoarding products for a while to create an artificial shortage, as we have done with onions, for example, as we have done with tomatoes or whatever the grocery, grocery products are or agricultural products are, or for farmers' fish, for example. Think about all the things that we consume daily. Prices, as they become dynamic and real-time, reduces the level and the opportunity for arbitrage and for hoarding. So to me, that's one key factor. And I'm just beginning to appreciate and analyze as a researcher the impact of dynamic pricing on marketing. Second area, of course, is promotion, which everybody knows. We are doing lots of research on social media analytics, for example, which is changing the research methods in the first place. But more importantly, it is now providing word-of-mouth communication, which always was a powerful marketing influencing mechanism to a level that's unimagined. The scale of word-of-mouth communication on a global basis through the internet and through social media platforms is just inconceivable. We say that I can literally create a brand and I can literally destroy a brand much faster than would have ever happened before. It is going to definitely challenge our traditional theories about diffusion of innovation, where we say you have the innovators, the opinion leaders, and then the masses. I think those days are gone. New product introductions through social media will be exponential or die out immediately. We have to rethink and revise our theories and our practices because social media as a component of digital disruption 
is going to be more progressive, more massive than ever imagined possible. Second thing and very important one is not just social media, but today the user is becoming the producer and a promoter. Users can create their own content. They can take liberties with your brand. Remember in the old days we talked about product placement in movies, product placement at point of sale, you know, where we keep it. Well, today consumers can place the products in wherever they want to. Isn't that interesting? And product placement by consumers in their own space, which is their own uh, social media website, their own URL, uh, their own Facebook page, etc., etc. Enormous, therefore, exposure and distribution of brands through media and channels other than the traditional mass market channels. In fact, I've been conceptualizing and actually doing some real work that today in the age of the internet, you have unlimited channels. Every consumer can create his or her own channel and promote or destroy any brand, so long as they have followings. And if you don't believe that, think about how many celebrities have millions of followers. Whether those are Shah Rukh Khan, for example, or Prime Minister Modi, for example, or any of the movie stars in America, or the rock stars, you know, the singers, etc., who have tours, just goes on and on. Every one of them have two or three million followers. So are true about other opinion makers. Each one has their own channel. And we never believe this stuff till we sit back and think about YouTube as an individual channel. Everybody can have a YouTube channel of their own, aggregate content, create content, curate content, and place your product inside that content. This is beyond just blogging. A colleague of mine, Michael Solomon, who is a great expert on consumer behavior, his textbook is the best-selling textbook in consumer behavior. And I got very excited about four years ago, of all places in Accra, Ghana, to write something about the digital world in which young people are living. They're all in virtual communities, like the Second Life, Farmville, or online video games. So there's a whole notion of self-identity, self-image through possessions, material possessions in the real world. So we began to think about extending the self in the digital world. <clears throat> what are the digital products and icons that I can collect? As we used to collect trading, you know, postage stamps, for example, from different postal systems. We collected the baseball trading cards in America. People collected coins. Well, today I can collect digital uh, sort of possessions and they may have market value through Bitcoin or something like that. All the transformation in marketing when it comes to promotion, advertising, etc., etc. And today consumers are as creative as ad agency creative people, please. If you have, I've got a talent in India who wants to be a millionaire kinds of programs, I can create enormous democratization of creativity through the internet and people can make commercials almost on a real time about your product and services more than you could have ever imagined. Let me go to the third P, which is place or distribution. I think our traditional theories about location, location, location probably need to be challenged and questioned, and maybe new things are likely to happen. At the last Diwali in 2015 celebrations in India, all of us were very surprised the rise of e-commerce platforms and how much people ordered on e-commerce despite access problems, no smartphones as much at that time, and they bought through e-commerce platforms like Flipkart, Snapdeal, Amazon, etc., etc. I think that is a permanent shift. In the U.S., we were also amazed at the Thanksgiving and Christmas. 
that more people order through their mobile phones rather than through laptops. That's a key change in America, going from laptop to the mobile. In India, we simply bypassed the uh, laptop age and went to do the mobile phones, which is a much bigger size and more access, more places than anything else. So the distribution is about to change. There's a very interesting phenomenon that anything that's core and there's a periphery, when periphery becomes core, core becomes periphery. It's like a Newton's law of gravity. Interestingly, it's uncanny. So my view is that as we begin to shift retailing toward online ordering, online search for products, online brand evaluations, etc., everything done online, we are likely to buy less and less physically. People have always questioned, this sounds like a utopia, maybe a mirage, not a real possibility. But think about how much of our purchase today happens physically at travel agent desks. Only place where you go to a travel agent today in India probably is for maybe cruise ships. Today we do everything online. Although the bookings are done online, especially by no frills airlines, such as Indigo, for example, or Go Air, whatever they are, which is fascinating. It is happening with banking. People are going mobile banking. They are not wanting to visit the uh, typical branches as we used to do, stand in line, and the banker will be sort of looking down on you. He has his own banking hours. Today, all of that is gone. It's 24 7. The banker is available to me at my terms because I'm in charge. So all of distribution is going to transform in a significant way. While it may disrupt traditional store-based formats and may blend many things in the process, I think the online purchase, online ordering will become the reality in India sooner than we thought because the delivery systems are still very affordable in India. And again, India can leapfrog as it has done with the cell phones, who says that the physical labor has to deliver on a scooter your product. It can be done by drones. We are experimenting with drones. I was amazed to find that in the US, for the first time in 2015, more drones are registered with the FAA, the regulatory body, Federal Aviation Administration, than the aircrafts, including private planes. I mean, I couldn't believe that. And the drones are growing more and more and more. So the world will be one of flying objects carrying products. Shipment-wise, it becomes easier. All of that is possible on my cell phone with an app. So if I have an Amazon app, a Flipkart, uh, Flipkart app, it just goes on and on. It is very revolutionary. So promotion, price, distribution place are about to shift in marketing. Or what about the product? I think product has two dimensions. One, of course, is the branding side of the product. And my view is that the companies have to learn how to be better brand stewards because it's not their own internal departments and integrated marketing communication where you say my ad agency person, my trade person, my media person, etc. should be coordinating my Business cards should look the same in branding and all that. We call it brand stewardship at a corporate level. Today, brands will be managed, manipulated, promoted, destroyed by the consumers in the marketplace. So the brand stewardship has to go external as much as it has to be internal. Enormous research opportunities for academics like us. So branding is about to change in the way companies will have to learn how to manage their brands and protect their intellectual property rights. More importantly, I'm more fascinated about products themselves. If the product could be digitized and distributed or consumed, the impact of the internet and the digital disruptions will be much stronger, much faster, much quicker, as we have seen with the airline and as we have seen with the banking business. So any services that could be digitized, either wholly or partially, is going to make a difference. And similarly, in fact, 
where you have to deliver the products physically because those are appliances, for example, those are whatever they are, you know, uh, as I said, any physical objects, in that case, probably the impact would be more gradual, but sooner than later. The impact of the digital online ordering will be far greater, surprisingly, in a B2B market because B2B markets are well-defined. You know the, and the sizes are small, you know your customer base, competitor's customer base, supplier base, it's very well-defined markets. And for the sake of cycle time, productivity, more and more companies are now saying, order it only online. Cisco Systems, Dell Computers led the way, where 75, 80% of the products will be ordered online. But today, more and more marketers will encourage their B2B customers to say, please order it online and we will fulfill it. For example, I have a little private office and we order paper supplies and we order bottled water, for example. We go to Office Depot as our key supplier along with many other companies like that and we simply order it online and they come and deliver it. And the cycle time is like next day. This is the Amazon delivering toilet tissue, delivering paper towels, delivering anything at home, but also same thing, Amazon Prime for business, delivering books, delivering everything. This is where the change is taking place. I think in addition to four Ps of marketing, the change will also happen to other related activities such as market research. Traditional market research will give way to more and more online feedbacks, which means rather than doing this annual surveys, annual audits, annual syndicated research, we are going to have a continuous feedback. And the feedback is not going to be numerical on a scale, but it is going to be actually like, dislike, and Facebook's new announcement that they're going to add more emojis, for example, for more expression, you're going to see that content, which is qualitative content, how do you analyze that? Traditional operations research techniques, econometric techniques will be going, giving way to, in fact, more and more natural process, uh, language processing, for example, which is a totally cognitive psychology, very different set of experts are involved. This is going to change our market research function, customer feedback function, customer satisfaction function. I also believe it is going to change our customer support function, which we don't talk about in marketing. But post-sell services will become very different as you look into the future. It is 24-7 real time, whether outsourced to anywhere in the world or done in sourcing. Either way, it doesn't make any difference. But customer support and customer service is going to be key. If I had to give two punchlines about the impact, I'll say the following. First one, marketing was always time-bound and location-bound, and digital disruptions, digital technology is making it almost time-agnostic and location-agnostic. Anytime, anywhere, anyhow, you want to buy, you want to consume, I'm at your service. And a second major change that is going to happen in this digital age is really having the impact on customer support organization where that is the market research place. It is the listening pay place. It is not like corporate people really understanding through professional market research how the market is behaving, but it will be the ground level customer support frontline people. They are the first responders. They have more knowledge, not only knowledge that is computerized, but in their minds. And how do we leverage the customer support, low wage, low education people, and their knowledge about the customers is very key. So the second major change in marketing is that we are going to shift our focus from buying behavior to user behavior. It is not the buyer who is going to be the focus of marketing. As all my life, I did it in the 60s, theory of buyer behavior that John Howard and I created, for example, now we need a theory of user behavior. It is the user that will be the focal point, not just the buyer. 
I hope you have enjoyed my presentation. Again, my apologies for not being there. Thank you very much.